Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to draw this mountain in charcoal and I'm going to show you how to construct a simple but effective scene. I'm mostly going to use willow charcoal and a medium charcoal pencil. So let's start. I'm working on a Fibriano drawing paper about 9 times 12 inches in size. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this piece of willow charcoal to shade the upper portion of my drawing. And if you're completely new to charcoal and charcoal drawing materials, uh, willow charcoal or vine charcoal is soft natural charcoal. It comes in sticks of irregular shapes and it's very easy to apply, it's very easy to blend, it's very easy to move around the residue and it's also pretty easy to mm, manipulate, modify, to take away value uh, by erasing. So uh, once I've laid down a sufficient amount of charcoal I'm going to do some blending because I want this part of the background to have a bit more value, I want it to be a little bit darker and I uh, need to blend it smoothly because I don't really want any texture or any suggestion of details or shapes in that area. That's going to be the sky, it's going to be the background of the mountain. So I'm going to want this to look mostly pretty smooth. So I applied another layer of that willow charcoal just to make sure that it looks a little bit more even and that it's a little bit darker than I originally made it so I added a bit more value, did a bit more blending uh, I used my finger initially and then I did some more blending using a round, large round brush which is, a, which is also a very good blending tool because it allows me to blend this whole thing very smoothly because, like I said, it's going to be the sky and I don't want any texture in the sky. I want a plain background, like it's maybe a murky sky uh, or, uh, or an evening sky. It doesn't really matter. So the mountain, or the mountain peak, is going to be roughly in the, min in the middle, in the center of my drawing. But obviously the peak is going to be a little bit closer to the upper edge of the paper. But the mountain itself is going to be taking up most of the central part of my drawing, of my composition. Now, once I have the outline of the mountain in place, I'm going to start working with an eraser. You can use a kneaded eraser, you can use a Kokinor pencil eraser, or you can use a Tombow Mono Zero eraser here, whichever you have. Here I'm using a Tombow Mono Zero eraser. And the convenient thing about this eraser is that you can use it and you can hold it just like a pencil and you can erase smaller marks or slightly larger marks whichever you want and you can see that by doing that I'm defining the lighter side of the mountain. So the light source obviously is coming from the left which means that the shadow side of the mountain is going to be on the right. But to all of that, I added some smaller details with a charcoal pencil, like some smaller, darker marks here and there, to represent maybe some cracks or some jutting rocks where there is uh, no snow or whatever, just to have a little bit more variation in shape and in texture. And um, I'm going to add these here and there randomly just to show that this is a rough terrain and that not all of it is completely covered with snow. It's not completely white. And I'm also going to define some smaller shapes within that larger shape so that I could explain to the viewer that this is a very rough and uneven surface. For that I use a combination of a medium charcoal pencil and that willow charcoal stick that I started out with. I'm adding some of those darker marks on the shadow side of the mountain as well. If you're wondering about the pencil I'm using, I'm using the Master Stutch woodless charcoal pencils. I'm mostly going to use a medium grade. 
Now this shadow side of the mountain is going to be on the right because it's facing away from the light source which, like I already said, is on the left. So I want this shadow side of the mountain to be at least a little bit darker than the background so that it would stand against the background, stand out against the background, and I want it to be considerably darker than the light side of the mountain. So uh, it's all about achieving value contrast and I need to have contrast between the background and the darker side of the mountain and the contrast between the darker and the lighter side of the mountain as well as the lighter side of the mountain and the background. So the lightest part of the scene is the mountain peak or the part of the mountain peak which is facing to the left, which is facing the light source. So you can see just by using erasing we can define lighter shapes and that's why I needed that darker background because it allowed me to create that contrast. Now about one third of the height of the paper I'm going to start adding some more elements which are a little bit closer to the foreground. At the foot of this mountain I'm going to add some wooded hills, lots of trees at the bottom. Right now it doesn't really look like much but I'm going to keep adding some willow charcoal and I want this part to be a little bit darker so I'm going to push in a little bit with my finger and then do a bit of refining both with my tortillion and by the way I use homemade tortillions that you can roll yourself if you have the ones that you can buy th those will work as well and in addition to that I will also use uh, some more of the willow charcoal at the top to imitate the um, small shapes of those trees in the distance. These are mostly going to be coniferous trees in this scene and I'm going to have lots of them here on this wooded area in the midground but occasionally I will dab on those either with a tutillion or with a brush because I don't want these smaller shapes to be too defined or too distracting. I want them to be there definitely but I don't want them to um, draw the attention of the viewer too much because I'm going to need to draw even more detailed stuff in the foreground. Now here's a foreground element here that's going to be all the way on the left. Uh, what I want this to look like is I want it to look like there are some branches and clusters of needles which are popping into the view, popping into the frame uh, so that the viewer can imagine that these are the branches of a tree which is very close to our viewpoint and those branches are popping into our, uh, our scene and they are obscuring a part of the mountain and they're obscuring a part of that background. So I made these look like branches of a coniferous tree with those clusters of needles. Now at the bottom I'm starting to stack even more elements and these are all going to be mostly darker. What I plan to achieve with those darker shapes is I plan to achieve a great deal of contrast and tension so that I could uh, create a feeling of depth in my scene and so that I could kind of maybe um, draw the attention of the viewer towards the peak itself. And I'm going to add multiple trees here. They're all going to be coniferous trees again and you can see that I'm drawing these tapering conical shapes that kind of look like maybe some fir trees, maybe some pine trees, it doesn't really matter what they are. We can have all kinds of them as long as it looks like a, like an evergreen forest, like a, a coniferous forest. And I'm going to keep adding some more here in the middle and uh, this is doing two things actually at the same time because I'm not just adding these darker elements in the foreground which will help my composition and my goal of achieving that contrast and tension but it's also helping me maybe cover up some of the less detailed parts of my drawing where I was really 
where I couldn't really be bothered to draw every single detail at the foot of the mountain. So I'm going to leave that just a little bit less defined and maybe a little bit lighter, like there's maybe a little bit of fog at the bottom there. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave a lot of these things to the imagination of the viewer, but I will try to define the shapes of these trees in the foreground pretty well. Uh, because uh, obviously they are closer to our viewpoint, so they need to be pretty detailed, and I need to draw at least some suggestions of those branches or uh, and the groups of leaves or uh, those crust clusters of needles that grow on them. I'm going to make it look like uh, these trees here to the right are even closer to our viewpoint. That's why I'm making them look a little bit larger and taller. And obviously I'm going to cover the rest of this bottom portion of the paper with a lot of uh, darker value using a medium charcoal pencil and I'm going to blend that in with my finger. I'm not going to blend over the entire shape of the trees because I don't want to ruin those smaller details. Maybe I'll just soften them a little bit but I'm mostly going to blend here at the bottom and then I'm going to leave those trees mostly as they are. So you can see uh, in a very short amount of time we've created an entire scene and you can now feel uh, like this forest which is in the foreground, is in the shadow, it's closer to us and then as we look up there are some more trees and then the mountain peak. I made some portions of that shadow side of the mountain a little bit lighter just to get some more complex shapes in there just to make the shape of the mountain a little bit more interesting. And I use my brush to take away a bit of value here at this slope in the foreground just to um, create some suggestions of that uh, sloped hilly terrain in the foreground as well so that it's not all completely dark. So that there is uh, one slope in front of the other here in the foreground as well. And here on the right side I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the left. So I'm going to introduce another foreground element, like some more branches are popping into the view here, popping into the frame. But these are going to be even closer than the ones on the left. That's why I'm going to define these branches and these needles even more. So I'm going to draw even more details here, because I want these to appear like they're even closer to our viewpoint. I'm going to make sure that I add enough of them and that I define their shapes a little bit more than the ones on the left, like I said. So uh, that's pretty much it. The scene is now complete. I'm just going to put a tiny signature here at the bottom on the right using my Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. And there it is. Uh, the drawing is finished. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a like and comment. All of these things mean a lot for my channel. And of course, if you want to see longer videos and a lot more content, you should check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.